LA's Hip Hop Morning Show, hey, baby. We are here we are. with the cast and the director and the writer and everybody from The Last everybody. Man, The Last Black Man in San Francisco. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. I'm peace, honest. peace, peace, peace. Now, peace. now uh, this movie, like I told you, Joe, this movie uh, really messed me up, honestly. Like, it, it, it touched on a lot of issues that I haven't really seen in film, right? Or at least in, in a film that I can relate to. And I, I mean, I could, got so many questions, but. Um, I just want to start off with this is a this was something you guys been working together for a very long time, right? Um, what I want to know is when did the idea spark, or what sparked that idea for this film, mm -hmm. and how long you guys been working for to forget this make to get this film made? When it's always kind of blurry to think about, you know, when exactly the idea came. I think I was probably it was before I went off to college. Uh, I went to New York for a year, go to college. Um, I think it was I was we was like walking and talking. I must have been like 16 or 17 when it first kind of we was just walking, talking about life, whatever. And then I was just like, you know, we were both just kind of like, oh, we can make a movie about that. You know, what I mean, it was like a joke. It yeah. was literally like not even serious at all. Yeah. And then, um, you know, then I went to college. I came back and I feel like I'd have like a sorry. I'm just, I'm just, I'm no, don't worry about it. My stuff. I'm sorry. Um, it's Brad Pitt. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Brad, we're busy, bro. <laughs> Chill. Um, so yeah, but I, I I think when I went to college and and I came back, um, I, you know, it wasn't really a good experience for me. I didn't know what I was doing. You know, I didn't have no friends and you know, nobody I could call out there. And uh, Joe was, you know, like I left Joe in San Francisco all alone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so when I came back, all it was alone. like, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, <laughs> not even had nobody. But, um, you know, when I came back, uh, <laughs> um, we was both in like a weird state. You know what I mean? I was just kind of, I, it was like a weird little depression. And I feel like that that's pretty much what birthed this it's like we just took that we we were talking about it before i left and then it kind of came back up when i got back and then it started to you know um form itself just yeah. me because I, I didn't uh, i moved in with him and his family because i didn't have no place to stay when okay. i came back and then we were just kind of together even more so all the time and it's a creative household both his parents are writers right. um so it was just you know just a bunch of creativity always you know just music movies and all that stuff that just kind of um inspired us you know? so just to recap for our listeners joe maybe you could i could get your help here because well yeah, yeah. um jimmy you wrote the film right and mm -hmm. you acted and we, you, yeah i co-wrote it we co -wrote wrote it, together. Co -wrote we it and you together. directed it mm -hmm. um give us give, give the, our listeners a recap on the movie a, qu a quick synopsis on the movie um because i know it obviously takes place in san francisco and mm -hmm. i guess san francisco and the house really is the main character in a way right yeah, exactly but well, uh, the house you, is my love interest it's the love story between a man and the house and then my yeah. best friend is tagging along with me that's basically what it is um and in a more simpler version, there's yeah. a lot more going on. Obviously. Of course, of course, but, yeah. of course. Um, so this film is it comes out the, on the sixth, right? On the sixth or the seventh, like seventh. here in LA, right? On the seventh, yeah, seventh, and then Friday, it's nationwide Friday, yeah. in July, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we get. I, I don't want to spoil too much. Right. I mean, how can we get deep in this conversation? I got so many damn questions. Let's do it. Like, I mean, let's do here. it. We here. All right, cool. Yeah. All right, bet. <laughs> um, gentrification is like the first thing that I noticed, right? So, um, so you guys are originally from San Francisco. Now, when you guys grew up in San Francisco, the, the San Francisco you guys know is totally different than the the SF that 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 is now. Correct. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. absolutely. Can we dive I mean, a little absolutely. bit into that? Yes. Um, I mean, again, I say this all the time. It just, San Francisco feels like a woman that don't love you back, basically, and you're trying to get her back if you can or something. It's just not the people, I mean, the people that make the city what it is are the ones that are being pushed out. That's more yeah. so what we're looking at than, than you know, because gentrification, I, I mean, we don't ever want to look at it in a heavy-handed sort of way, like, oh, uh, you know, like all oh, these techies are coming in and they and they messing it up. It's like if you, yeah. if you make enough money, you live whatever wherever you want to live. It's not about that. It's about if you're gonna move there, then you need to respect the people that were there and try to become a part of what's going on and not bring your own sort of agenda. So, right. yeah. um, you know, yeah. That, yeah just to add, to, oh, no, 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 go ahead. No, I, I was just gonna piggyback on that and say I totally agree. You know, it's funny that when we were watching this movie, it kind of hit close to home in a sense of. A few months back, I went to an old house that I grew up in, right? And I was in the neighborhood, and I was actually killing time. And I was like, man, I, live, I used to live down the street. So I went down there, and I actually put it on Insta Story, like, man, I grew up in this house. 
but I just didn't feel like a part of the community anymore. And I felt like even though that was my house where I have all my memories, I just felt like I looked around and I was like, I don't think I fit in anymore. Right. You know what I'm saying? And this that that's I feel like yeah. sometimes what gentrification can help make us feel like, especially when we grew up in those neighborhoods. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you feel like mm-hmm. you don't belong in the city that you're from. Exactly. It's this yeah. unfamiliar yeah. feeling, yeah. I think. You know, it's weird. It's you San feel Francisco like that's not your house and that's not your neighborhood or something. Exactly. Yeah. Like or something, exactly. You know? yeah. That's a line Rob says in the <laughs> yeah. movie line. Yeah. yeah. But I think that is a weird, you know, San Franciscans, I think like anyone that's bled for a city that you lived in, mm-hmm. we love San Francisco. Like, we love to love on San Francisco. It's like when you see it in movies, you sit on the edge of your seat to watch. In music, you know you're very proud. And yet, when you look at San Francisco's history, like Jimmy has said, you know, the people that love San Francisco most, sometimes it doesn't feel like the city loves them back. Right. You know, there's a story uh, I was told when I was young about how Willie Mays came to San Francisco, already a living legend. He's already a say hey kid. Right. And he couldn't buy a house at first in San That's Francisco. Crazy. What? You know? And then you look deeper and there's whole blocks of Victorians in the Fillmore District, which was known as the Harlem of the West. Right. That were bulldozed. And the people that were living there were just swept away. You know, never allowed to come back. More recently, a woman named Iris Canada, who'd been living uh, in an apartment for five decades, was 100 years old, and was fighting the last few years of her life to keep her house in San Francisco, and she lost it. Wow. And she died. That's crazy. So these are the people that have been bleeding for San Francisco for so long. Yeah. And like Jimmy said, you know, when they're pushed out as a San Franciscan, I'm a fifth-generation San Franciscan. Yeah. You start to wonder... Uh, what what does this city even mean? You know. Yeah, I mean, obviously, SF is you know your passion. That's your city. But Rob, you're, you're from Brooklyn, right? I was gonna say the same thing. Come on, that's on like Brooklyn, man. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's that's what I think is gonna resonate with this movie yeah. with everybody, because everybody wants a sense of home, a sense that they can call yeah. and that that they can identify with, that yeah. that speaks their voice, that that recognizes them. You know, and uh, that's one of the beautiful things about this movie, highlighting that that aspect of gentrification. Yeah. I mean, really, I think it's a global thing because I yeah. was just in France, man, and, and going from Nice to Cannes, all I saw was construction, and yeah. it made me think of Brooklyn. You know what I mean? That's and crazy. Then, then some of the stories that Jimmy shares about when we were even shooting this movie, from a week to six days, it would be a sight that you know hey man this would be a perfect place to shoot this movie and then you come back and it's like gone the next day already yeah. you know that's yeah. how fast it's happening you know what I mean and go, you, you and go back to Brooklyn things happen in LA too yeah, right yeah. Yeah. Really? for you guys I mean, we're talking about East LA <laughs> Boyle, Boyle Heights, Boyle Heights yeah. Highland Park Mid City yes yeah. it's like Brooklyn bro I can't even recognize it anymore all these yeah. coffee shops and DC, juice spots it's Labradoodles DC is going on coffee shops be killing me like they put like three coffee shops on one block in the city it's like why do you need why? three we, it's, we all getting the same. Yeah. Right. Coffee yeah. is coffee, bro. I don't get it. Yeah. It's going on in D.C. It's going on in Georgia. Mm-hmm. It's going on all over the place. I, I like how smooth you are right now, D.C. and Georgia. But, like, <laughs> in the movie, you cold, man. Oh, and you're man. cold you to your son. You like, in the movie. yeah. I, like, you, are you a scammer in the movie? Like, what? Because when, when you're putting up the tapes, right? Or you're, like, putting the CDs in the, in yeah. the bag? Well, you the know, DVDs, the yeah. DVDs, hey, the fake DVDs, the bootlegs? Yeah. I'm out trying to get an honest dollar. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's the black yeah. man experience in America that any way I got to get it, I'm going to get it. Isn't you know it funny, I mean? though? Like in Stranger Things, you play a cop. I do. I play a cop <laughs> in, in Dead Devil and Luke Cage. I play a gun runner and all that stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? We're going to get back to the movie, but I just want to salute you. Are you like one of the only characters that come out in every Netflix uh Series, a, a TV show, right? Like the one you came out on pretty much all of them, Daredevil. Yeah, and all was, of them. let's clap it up, bro. Oh, come man. on, Samuel L. Jackson and Nick Fury ain't got nothing on you, bro. They you were there the whole time. They, um, <laughs> oh, but now wow. back to the Thank movie, you. Jimmy. You and, and, and um, so you is, is his character now renamed Mont? Are you like the no, Mont no, character? No, 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 it was never, it was never. I mean, you know, I we was always gonna do this together. I would right. never do, I would never made this with anybody else, but. Um, the character was never supposed to be like Joe or nothing like that. It was supposed to be a friendship that we were gotcha. creating, but that yeah. was inspired by the vulnerability that we have in our friendship. You know right. what I mean? So, yeah. Um, yeah, but if that ca- explains yeah, it. Yeah, but the character, you know, there was a guy named Prentice that we met early on who's another great San Franciscan. Right. He's a total original. So he inspired sort of shades of what became mm. Montgomery. 
But then we met Jonathan Majors, man. Man, he, he just, just took whatever's it, yeah, on the page you know. just to a whole other an place. Animal. You know, yeah. it's a beautiful. You man. you were great, by the way, oh, and super you. athletic. That wasn't you skating down them hills, right? Like that, some of them. That some was you. Of them, yeah, some of them. Okay. <laughs> Young beast mode. I don't know. Yeah, okay. Also, like being my size, I've never been on a skateboard yeah. in my life. Yeah. But you guys have both of you guys on the skateboard at the same mm -hmm. time. I've never seen that happen. That's that the first time. That was hard time. to do. We yeah, called no, Thrasher. We had to, yeah. Because Thrasher's had from, you know, San Francisco. They were founded yeah. in Hunter's Point. So we called Tony, who runs Thrasher. And we were like, Tony, can you get two dudes on one board? And he Bro. was like, I don't know. That sounds crazy. We got to call I really don't second, know. But, yeah. but yeah. these guys made it work. That was crazy. Yeah. And, um, yeah. We, can we get into, like, man, I don't want to spoil the movie. Should we well, spoil I, I have one. I yeah. do have a question. I mean, talking about how uh, people from San Francisco have so much pride. Noah's from the Bay Area has a lot of pride. Y'all yeah. <laughs> yeah, do. How has the people of San Francisco reacted to this oh, film? Oh, I want to know how man, they reacted. Because they're the ones man. that are living this right man. now and dealing with this. Yeah. How have they it's a reacted? Movie, yeah, it's a movie, you know, by the city for the city, mm. you know, first and foremost. And then, like Rob said, you know, We've been, I think, surprised to see how many people in different parts of this country mm -hmm. are responding to it because the same things, unfortunately, are happening everywhere. But we had our premiere at the Castro Theater, mm -hmm. which is our last mm -hmm. cinema palace in San Francisco this past week. And, uh, man, I, for us, it was like the, the event itself was inspiring because you don't see that many natives back in one space together, mm -hmm. you know? It felt like everyone that was left in San Francisco that grew up there was all there. It was 1,400 people, nice. you know, 90% natives. And, um, you know, to like all be in a place together, seeing different people, like to me, a part of growing up in San Francisco was different kinds of people having conversations, you know? The park where Jimmy and I met, you know, that was yeah. a melting pot of sorts, you know, Proceda Park in at the edge of Bernal Heights in the Mission District. Yeah. And so, you know, to see all these people back in this space from all different walks of life, talking, having conversations, loving on each other. That's a part of the culture. That's yes. part of what yeah. makes it what it is. When you have so much crossover and, and people and creating that dialogue, then that, that's the culture. It's like people are so cultured and educated on everyone's culture. You grow up around everybody and you should know a little bit about all yeah. of them, mm -hmm. you know? So yeah. That's one of the things uh, I loved about the whole experience of that uh, that premiere that we had because uh, my introduction to this was thrusted into the tenderloin. You know what I mean? <laughs> mm -hmm. Ain't nothing tender about the tenderloin. You go, down there, <laughs> you go down there, they told me the guy who came up with the walking dead walked through the tenderloin, I would believe it. You know what I mean? <laughs> but it shows the disparity between the wealth and the, and yeah. the have nots in yeah. San Francisco because from what I understand, it has the most billionaires in the world in San Francisco. That's one what I've heard. Yeah. one out of I mean, every eleven thousand people is a billionaire. But then you can go there and see somebody like lace up a heroin needle in broad daylight and shoot it like it's nothing. You know what I mean? Crazy. And uh, yeah, it just shows you those disparities. And the thing that mm -hmm. really attracted me to the script was just the the quality of the relationships amongst men mm. that are being displayed in this, particularly black men that we mm -hmm. rarely, yeah. if at all, get to see. You know, it was refreshing. And I don't want to spoil it for you, but I really feel like, you know, you, you'd really uh, appreciate the the look into the black male experience that yeah. this movie gives. Because a lot of people don't get that and they get trained for that through the media. And a lot of times what they see isn't who we are. Yeah. And this movie, I think, gives a good balance of how black men experience in America is, you know, yeah. how we desire love, mm -hmm. how we have friendships, how we want the same things for our families like everybody else. Absolutely. It definitely was refreshing watching the different experiences. And I, you know, maybe when the movie comes out nationwide, we'll talk more in depth, but um, one of the things that stood out to me were labels or being boxed in. Cause I don't want to, you know, ruin the movie for, for everyone out there, but just um, talk to me about that. Like, is that a personal experience? Because obviously you, you co-wrote the movie, mm -hmm. and even for yourself directing the movie, like um, being labeled by society, your neighborhood, your parents, you know? I don't um, think that's personal at all. I mean, it's personal to it me, is. but it's just so relatable to so many people. I feel like everybody, especially black men, you always feel like you got to be in, have a be one thing or something, mm -hmm. and yeah. that's just not that people just aren't one thing. It's like, yeah. you, especially mm -hmm. in San Francisco, you're going to be around all these different you know, environments and you know what I mean? It's like you got your, you know, I grew up in a project. It's like I got my friends there, but then I got my friends at school that's from different projects and whatever. Right. And then you got, you know, so you, you, you jumping all around and you can't, you know, you, you got to do 
Yeah, I mean, to it's see just, your brother skateboard. That's what I was going to say. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Brothers and sisters skateboard, man. Skateboard. And then, like, I don't even think it's even like at some point boxed in so much as I think as men of color, you have to work extra hard to prove yourselves, which mm -hmm. is it's not fair, but we need to acknowledge that, you know what I mean, as women sometimes and even applaud that. Mm -hmm. Because as men of color, you guys go through so much bullshit every single day. You know what I mean? And just adding a layer of gentrification on top of it is just something that we have to fight as a community. Mm -hmm. Now, speaking on Thank that. you for acknowledging that. No, I do. I acknowledge, yeah. I acknowledge, you know what I mean, my black and brown brothers. I really, really do because I understand how hard it is and I just think like, man, it must be so hard that you guys have to prove yourself every single fucking day, you know? Um, but a question that I do have is people that are watching right now, there's a lot of people, and even Noah spoke on it, that know about gentrification, but they don't know the details or sometimes how deep, and they don't know how to get involved, mm. you know? And there's people out there that, and it's no diss to them, they just don't know. Right. Somebody has not educated them, right. you know? So somebody watching this, like, how do you encourage them to get involved? Like, what's the first step? I would say write letters, hold the city responsible. If you see a broken window or a dilapidated building, bring some attention to it. Uh, make the city be accountable for beautifying it or and, and, and keeping your neighborhood. You know, if you see somebody throwing trash down, pick it up. Because in my opinion, somebody shouldn't be able to come into your neighborhood and make it better. You know what I mean? It should already be better. It should already be running at a high moral standard. You see what I'm saying? So right. all somebody can do is just come in and join you. You know what I mean? If they want to put X amount of dollars into that stuff, that's on them. But the, the neighborhood is already functioning at a high morality. That's just my opinion. I think, Write letters to the, to yeah, the city. Yeah, no, I think that's that's huge too. And just you know, starting a dialogue amongst your community and your peers. Because right. when you do that, then it's easier to come together. And then then that's when you could show up to city hall. If you show up to city hall with twenty people as opposed to just a couple mm -hmm. then then they're going to hear you out more and then hear what you got to say so you got to start a dialogue with everybody in the community and make sure that y'all you know come together and 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 form you know form your plan or or, or your your uh your what is the word I'm looking for? Right? See, your see pitch, your, your pitch, or whatever. Yeah. I mean, you know, you just gotta to to be able to express that. It just it holds more weight if you if mm -hmm. if they see the community. Teamwork make the it. dream work. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think adding to that too. You know, if you're from a place, get to know your neighborhood activists. There are people Word. that have been spending their whole lives trying to protect the neighborhoods that we all cherish, fighting. You know, and I think they're often very knowledgeable about what's happening and can give even more insight than I'm sure we can who are like on the you know fighting in the trenches every day and I think if you're moving somewhere like Jimmy said get to know your neighbors you know San Francisco has a proud history of being a city that welcomed waves of people in the past African Americans who came to work in the shipyards people that were fleeing you know uh, persecution who came to San Francisco to be the people they couldn't be in the towns they were from and so many San Franciscans that are great are not from San Francisco, but they made it home and they yeah. partook in what was happening in the city and they loved the city. They didn't just come for a gold rush, which yeah. is I think what we fear is happening right now. So, you know, get involved in the place that you're moving to. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm glad you guys said that because that happens a lot. It's even, it happened in the Bay Area recently, right? With, um, at the, was it was at the lake. Like oh, they, they yeah. didn't want to barbecue at in the lake, Oakland. yeah, oh, in Oakland, yeah. right? In Oakland, yeah, well, <laughs> Lake Merritt, yeah, yeah. So I mean, we got you know, you move into a place that's awesome. You come from wealth, but get to know the people of that city, get to know that culture, to mm -hmm. appreciate it. Um, before we move on, I I, I definitely want to shout out. Um, the supporting cast you got on there. Yep. Tashina Arnold, Danny Glover, Mike Epps. San Francisco oh, yeah. native Danny Glover. Really? Oh. Fillmore what? native Danny Glover. There we go. Yeah. Fillmore. Hey. Um that pitch was easy. Like just right. <laughs> he just he was like, yeah, yeah I'm in. Yeah. Nah, he, called he, called, he just called me. He, he called, called you. Me. Yeah, <laughs> called wow. me. Okay, first of all, really quick, I know you got to go. Yeah. Tell me about that moment on that phone call because Donnie Glover is just everything, right? Yeah. He, so how was that? It, I mean, <laughs> it was super casual. I mean, just call, I was on, on my way back from the gym or something. I don't know. And he <laughs> called me. He was like eating lunch, still smacking, and you could just still tell he was eating. I don't know what he was eating. It sounded like whatever it was, it was good. But we, we just started talking about uh, like. You know, just feel, just the Fillmore in general. That's where I was born, and he's from there. He's been there for years, and I, we, I was talking about my history there, and he was talking about just the the whole history there. Like people, you know, you've seen the Temptations live there, and just telling me all the stuff that was going on yeah, in the Fillmore true, that yeah. I didn't know. Yeah, and just giving me hell of free game, basically. So. Um, I think that conversation was when, you know, and then I explained to him the story and why it needed to be sort of, I mean, why we felt we needed to tell this and stuff. And I think that's um, 
essentially, you know, what got him to come. I don't want to take full credit for, oh, for that. But he, but he called me. He called me. He didn't call him. He called me. He called me. He called me. Okay. So, yeah, yeah, no, it's so true. Much, yeah. Man. No, yeah. No um, so they can see the film uh, June when and 7th. where? June 7th. June 7th. June 7th. It's in it's LA. LA theaters. I don't know all the name of the theaters, but just ArcLight in LA. The yeah. Landmark, yeah. ArcLight, Arc yes. Yep. And then yes. It's, it's available nationwide in mm -hmm. July. In San yeah. Francisco, it'll be at the Alamo Draft House and the Metreon Theater. I know that. So I want everybody to come out. Right. Yeah. 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 And then in LA, ArcLight. ArcLight mm -hmm. is, uh, is it the ArcLight in Hollywood Boulevard? ArcLight. It's really nice over there. Yeah. There you go. Angelica and Lincoln. Square in New York, come show out, man. Brooklyn, yes. what up? You know it. You know it. <laughs> Thank, Thank you guys so much. much. Yeah. Next time, we'll make sure to wear Dodger hats. I wasn't expecting you to walk so cold. Yeah. 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 You did it. I, was, I saw y'all like, oh, damn. Last black man in San Francisco, yeah. baby. Yeah.